Hi, I'm Dan Derby, and I'll present you the work we've done at Carnegie Mellon University uh, about combining spectral features and self-supervised representations for speech recognition and translation. So, um, in the last decade, the end-to-end -end model have proven to be uh, superior in many tasks than the conventional um, hidden Markov model, for instance, for speech recognition. However, those models are very data hungry, and so when you're targeting low resource, you have to uh, low resource tasks, you have to find good solution to train those big end-to-end -end models. One solution could be training a um, multilingual model because you can use the hours you have in a lot of data, uh, a lot of languages, including high resource languages. So you will have lots uh, of hours of data. But this has some drawbacks, such as you have to get this data, you have to train a huge model, you can get some catastrophic forgetting, etc. So another solution is to use self supervised learning. Uh, which uh, models which have been pre-trained on large unlabeled uh, quantity of data, which is cheaper to uh, get because it's not labeled. And then you can use this strongly pre-trained model and fine tune it on your small amount of data. So self-supervised model have been proven to work very well on variety of tasks. However, they're trained on English red speech only. And we have seen in previous papers that they perform poorly on a certain domain or language shift. And they are hard to retrain like from scratch on other data or to adapt. On the other hand, um, we have um, like, let's talk about the feature extractors. So we have the spectral feature extractors such as the Lodmar filter banks or F banks that have been used for decades and that are language agnostic, non learnable and made of very tailored mathematic transformations such as the Fourier transform. Um, and now some people use self supervised learning models as feature extractors or as a front end component. Uh, and as I said, it's pre trained in English only for most of them. It's learnable. They are not using spectral features uh, in, at fine tuning time, and they are very strong for a lot of tasks. So, can we combine strengths of SSL representations, models, and spectral features at fine tuning time in uh, the low resource tasks? The main contribution of this paper is to study this like possible combination and to propose learnable fusion of self based learning and spectral feature representations. Um, that are working very well in practice. And we also introduced the first Totorac ASR dataset, uh, which is an endangered language spoken in Mexico that I'm gonna give a bit more detail uh, in a few seconds. So firstly, let me talk about the proposed methods. Uh, so we're extracting features with uh, two different front ends. So we need to get the same number of frames, the same frame shift. So either we can uh, tune the parameters of the self supervised learning models or the spectral feature extractor to get the same number of frame, or you can just extract them with like the best parameter or the classic parameter and then linearly project them. So I'm not gonna go dive into details to this phase because just, okay, get the same number of frames for each of the um, front end. And then we'll use uh, fusions that are described by this generic function here uh, with number two, equation two. So I kept the same number of equations at the paper. So you can report to the paper for more details. And so you have the two features, uh, the two representations of the signal S, so F of spectral features of the signal S and the output of the SSL model of the signal S. And then you're gonna transform both of those features and finally just linearly project them. And the transformation could be concatenation, so simple convolution or co-attention. So you can look at the paper for a bit more detail, but I'm gonna describe the co-attention one. So for co-attention, we use the scale dot product attention with residual connection, but on both sides. So let's look at uh, this 
picture here, the illustration of this mechanism. So we have the signal S, we extract with spectral feature, we extract with self-surprised learning, and then we use the spectral features as a query here, and the self-surprised learning representations as the key and values. And we use the attention mechanism with here, the resort connection, and exactly the same here. So it's a symmetric uh, process here. And finally, we concatenate and project the used feature to get the fusion one and feed the encoder decoder with those uh, fused features. So this is described with equation four and five and still go to the paper for more details if needed. So those three uh, variants enable to have to incorporate both spectral and SSL features and feed the model with this. We also designed a mixture of expert uh, model for fusion, but it was more to understand more the role of each front end, the role, the role of its, each component. And for this, we use gating mechanism and learnable weights for each time frame. So let's look at the picture here. So we have the arsenal, we have the extraction from vector feature, extraction from self surprise learning model, and we have so a representation for each frame, so from A1 to AT for spectral feature and B1 to BT for self surprise representations. So same time frame as I told before, um, same number of frame, and then we use a gate, so we feed this gate with the spectral feature. Um, uh, vectors, we can also use the SSL vectors. We have very similar results. And then we have learnable weights on the gates and uh, gating functions such as log softmax or softmax. So this is equation seven here with this WMOE, that is the learnable weights. And this enable to get two weights, one for the spectral feature and one from the subsequent learning representations. And then it's just a weighting sum so a weighting sum from those green features and those red features here. And so we have for each frame a different weight. So that's why you have colors here from the green to the red. And then we have this fusion and fit it to the encoder or decoder. And once again, this is to have interpretable weight. So this is more still to get some bit more interpretation on which component is more important for each frame or for each language or something like this. Let me now uh, explain you the data we use. So we use the total data set. So total data set is total language is an emerging language from Mexico, uh, spoken near the Puebla in Veracruz uh, areas, and our collaborators have um, gotten ten hours of conversational speech that is labeled for this language. So this is huge effort and we now release this data set. Um, we also use other languages such as Arabic set from Common Voice 5.1, so still low resource, only 20 hours of red speech this time, and also a very low resource embody French speech translation corpus made of less than five hours of speech. So we wanted to have those different language because we can prove our points with a tighter set of language family. Let me now uh, talk about the results we got. The, let's begin by the ASR results here. So just to give a bit more context, we're using transformer model with uh, 12 layers uh, of encoder and six layers of decoder and we're using a hybrid like CTC and cross entropy loss. Um, we're using Hubert as our self supervised learning model as it gave good results on the super benchmark and we're taking Hubert large version, um, which have been trained on the 60K hours of LibriVox data set. For more details, just refer to the experimental details in the paper. And here I'm gonna describe the results. So firstly for ASR results, um, and let's look at uh, those two columns here, so Totonac and Arabic, and uh, metric is the character rate, so lower is better. And we have first a great progression from the baseline encoder-decoder model to the model with 
same architecture, but self-supervised model as a front end. So we have a dimension of uh, 3% absolute for the Totonac and uh, more than 7% absolute for the Arabic. So this is uh, already a great improvement with those models for both data set and mostly for more for Arabic than from, for Totonac. Then we can look at the four model we proposed. So all our fusion mechanism gave better result than both baseline in the two languages. And we can see that already the just linear, so linear is the concatenation and then linear production. So the simplest one is already giving very good improvement. And the best one we got is the co-attention one, probably because it's more symmetric and it has a larger capacity. The interesting thing is that the mixture of expert model that we are uh, just introduced for more interpretability gave also better scores than baseline. So it is also very good results. And the admission is more than 30% for the Arabic and uh, more than 5% for the Totonac. So it's quite significant. And Arabic is benefiting more than the Totonac. For the Mercy French speech translation, we use the blue score as our metric, evaluation metric, and so we see the higher is better. And we can see that adding the self supervised learning model is getting worse results than baseline um, here. And if we use linear fusion and the other fusion, we gain some score compared to the to both baselines, uh, except for co-attention that here is less good probably because it's only four hours and here is bit bigger capacity and harder to train. But linear is having very good improvement. The, um, lastly, the mixture of expert result weights. So we can see here the mean weights. So three things. Um, we had consistent weight into, for each frame into uh, same uterines. This is expected because the voice, the speaker, the variation, the accent will be same for one uterine. So we'll have same weight. We also have same weight across different similar ways across different utterances in the same language, in the same domain, so in the same data set here. But from Totonac to Arabic, we have a very different mean weight. So very low from Totonac, which means this is a weight for self supervised learning models, for the Hubert model, which means that this relies at 80% on the uh, spectral features. And this is more like 50%, 50%. And if we look at the character rate reduction between base and base plus front end with self-supervised learning, so the, these two lines here in these two columns, we have a diminution of almost 50% for the Arabic and 17% only for the Totonac. And this is probably due to the fact that Arabic data from Comoros is red speech here. And here is conversational speech, which is more far from the pre-training data of uh, Hubert. So this means that the fusion models here proposed are understanding that and rely less on the self supervised learning models when the domain shift is big, it's just helping a bit. Uh, so this is one reason why uh, probably we have those weights here. This is our interpretation. So in conclusion, a uh, simple fusion mechanism can be very efficient for addressing domain shifts and using self-supervised learning models efficiently. And we'll extend this work to more uh, SSL models, including uh, um, multilingual ones, such as uh, XLSR. And we'll also extend to more data set for, uh, to prove the robustness to, that this is robust to like, most of the data sets. Thank you for listening and don't hesitate to ask uh, any question.